Welcome to the Consciousness Anywhere and Everywhere podcast. I am Shannon O'Hara and I invite you to a completely new world of possibilities. Christmas trees for the future. Give the gift of nature this Christmas. Get your loved ones a tree for the future. Located in the forest for futures grove in Elugar, Costa Rica. Gift a tree this holiday season so your friends and family have the gift of fresh air and a happy earth. A tree is a gift that keeps on giving. Visit actionsforfutures.com backslash Christmas to gift a Christmas tree for the future. Hello, all my beautiful friends and Merry Almost Christmas. Happy Hanukkah and welcome to the Consciousness Anywhere and Everywhere podcast. Myself and the beautiful, amazing, kind Dane here are here today to bring you a special Christmas episode. Yay, Christmas! Which is a time of gifting. Or at least it should be. Or at least it should be. And a time of receiving. At least it should be. At least it should be. And a time of receiving the gifts that we have in our lives that we don't often acknowledge. You know, the, what I would love to see is between Thanksgiving and Christmas, I would like Thanksgiving to kick off a spree of receiving of gifting, meaning acknowledging the gifts of the people and the things that we have in our lives that we don't often acknowledge and have that increase every single day until you get to the beginning of the next year and you are ready to create because gratitude always increases your creativity and your joy and your peace and it helps you deal with stressful situations and generally your quality of life is way greater. Beautiful. And could you guys imagine what that would create in your lives if from the, the day Thanksgiving USA, which is usually the, the last Thursday of the last November. Last Thursday of November. So yeah. everybody out there who doesn't do Thanksgiving, who's listening to this, it's just like the last, the last week of November began the buildup of gratitude that lasted all the way through till the new year where you exploded into a new possibility. That. And what a different life that would be. Um, you had had an interesting conversation about this year about Christmas because you're very fortunate, Dane. You sort of, you have created a life where you have everything that you want plus some. Yes. True which story. You have one. And I say that you have created that consciously because you have this was not something you were you know that just accidentally fell into your lap true story you know when i met you you were i wouldn't call it poverty but pretty pretty, pretty darn close struggling with the finances yeah <clears throat> yeah that's a nice way to put it struggling with the finances in my mind i was poor and had poverty yeah and stressed about it and it was one of the big stresses of my life yeah and so like how was christmas for you back then compared to what christmas is for you today well, I think I probably fell into somewhat of a typical role in Christmas where where I would try to overspend to prove that I cared to people because they didn't seem to get that I cared. And I thought if I got them a good enough present, like with my girlfriends, with my family, and no matter what present I gave them, because they had, well, let me just say one of the reasons being they had so little capacity and willingness to actually receive, it doesn't matter what gift you give them they won't receive the gifting that exists in your heart and in your being. So no matter what you do as an outward expression of that, that won't be received either. But that also comes from a continuous sort of uh, people being as, as they have learned to be in the world right now where there's so very little receiving. And so I would try to make up for that by spending more money than I had, putting it on my credit cards, being stressed and then and then at the same time it wouldn't create the effect hmm. you know it, in some people's worlds it would they were like oh my god thank you so much thank you for putting so much thought into this thank you for getting me this wonderful thing but for by and large most people it didn't create that effect so we would get to christmas morning and of course we'd have to go see families and it was always like you have to go see your family not yay i can't wait to see my family you know except for my mom i always wanted to go see my mom and hang out with my mom because she actually loves me and she actually receives, you know, the gift that I am and, and enjoys that far more than the rest of my family. But it was this, it was a stressful time, a, a time of trying to, to prove rather than really getting to relax into being what it is that I could be that, that could be greater, that would sort of set me up for greater the following year. 
Which is so interesting because, I mean, before Christmas was well, Christmas, it was essentially the celebration of the sun returning, mm. which meant the great, the promise of the light and the warmth and the energy from the sun returning to the right. earth in the Northern Hemisphere, of course. Right. Because um, both of us are from European descent cultures. And let's face it, Christianity has pretty much taken over the timeline yeah. of the planet. True story. So we communicate based on that timeline. Um, but if you really look at it, Christmas was taken from the time, the return of the sun. Yes. But I have to say the timeline has been taken over now. So now BC means before Corona. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> so Christmas before Corona, no Christmas after exactly. Corona. Exactly. And it's like what I, something that I would so love more of in the world is gifting and receiving. Me too. Because we see, especially in the United States, um, there's a tremendous amount of consumerism that occurs around Christmas. And I'm really lucky because I'm actually from a family that does gifting, like, for the joy of it. Right. And there's always been this abundance of cool things. So I really, I was really, like, lucky in that way. And what I've noticed is as I've gotten older, the gifting hasn't stopped. It's just actually increased. But what's increased more is the ability to have gratitude for the good fortune yeah. And that. recognizing that even if there isn't a physical gift, there's still receiving that occurs. Yes. And that really is the gift. And that is the gift. That right there is the gift. You know, it, it, at one point I bought my mom a house and um, this was a dream of mine. And what's funny is when I was a little kid also, I, I, she used to love Porsches, especially the convertible. You know, we saw one driving by and she's like, I would love to have that. And I was probably six years old. I said, Mom, one day I will get you one. And um, for her, I think it was her 70th birthday, 70, I th 65th, I don't know, one of those milestone birthdays, um, I got her this convertible BMW. And it was a used convertible BMW, but it was like this fulfillment of this, this thing. And it was so special to see her actually receive it. And she's like, son, you did it. She's like, you promised me. And we would talk about it a lot as I was growing up, especially in that time where I was dreaming about, like a, dreaming about being able to have, to be whatever kind of person it took to be that, to be able to do that for my mom. And dreaming about having the financial resources, which I didn't have for so long. And um, so to be able to do it, it was this great acknowledgement of, oh, I actually had a dream and I made it come true mm -hmm. and it didn't look anything like the way I thought it would to make that come true. But it was an acknowledgement of both of us in this beautiful receiving and she cried and I sang her a song and, you know, and it was just in that, that's, so there's that, that like just massive gratitude that, that receiving of the gift, because the real gift was the caring that I had for her that I stated when I was a little kid. And the only way I knew to say that, look, this is going to happen was like, I'm going to do this. And then to have that be received on her part, which was this kid has cared about me his entire life and held this in his world and made this happen. But it was such a, a gift of my caring for her. But it was also an acknowledgement of her that somebody cares for her that much and and an acknowledgement of me also her receiving that. So this the simultaneity of gifting and receiving. Well, fast forward to, I don't know, I guess six or seven years ago. And, um, and I bought her a house and you know, it's, it's a house in Idaho, which is, it's easier to buy houses in Idaho, um, where she's living, you know, property values are not right. like, not like Southern California, not like Southern California. Yeah. And, um, and it was interesting because she, she resented me for it. And I was like, well, I hadn't asked her, but what happened was she moved from Santa Barbara and went back to Idaho. And, and, um, and I had this dream, like I did with the car. I wanted to give her a nice place to live that she absolutely loved that would make her happy every day when she woke up. Mm -hmm. So I went, I had my uncle, who's a real estate agent, find the house. I bought the house, gave her the house. And it was like, she hated me. Like I, but this is, this is part of the reason for this story is because when you give somebody something they're not willing to receive, they will return it to you with daggers attached, which Gary said 20 years ago, and I, I really realized it. 
because a lot of you out there may be listening and going, I want to give people so much, but if you give them more caring than they're willing to receive, if you give them more money, if you give them more stuff, if you give them more uh, love, more gratitude, more joy, they return it to you with daggers attached. And for me, I was so sort of heartbroken and stunned because the gift I was trying to give was just being shoved in my face. And so, and what it did is it, and one of the other things you'll notice when you go to gift something that somebody's not yet ready or willing to receive is they'll feel like this wall comes up between you that you don't understand. You just kind of feel wrong and they feel standoffish and you're like, what's going on? And so I was up there the following Christmas and I said, mom, I said, how about if we just sell the house? I'm like, I'll take the loss on the house. I will get you a trailer, which is what she would have been more comfortable mm -hmm. with living in a single or double wide trailer. Double wide would have felt like a palace to her at that point. And I said, why don't we do this? I said, you have not seemed to be happy ever since I got you this house. And, yeah. and, and I also said, you know what? I'm really sorry because having bought a house now, because I had bought the house we're living in now, I said, I realized that there's so many aspects that go into making a house work for you from the location to the way the doors look to the way the layout is and all this sort of stuff. I asked when I bought this house, would this be something she would love? And I got a yes. Mm. But if you weren't the one to choose it, I can understand it probably feels just like a burden. And it's a three bedroom house. So for her, probably that was bigger than she wanted or needed. And um, I said, so why don't we do that? And we cried together and hugged. And she said, let me let you know. And the next day she came and said, son, I'm so grateful for this house. Thank you so much. And I realized the caring that was in it. And I realized I couldn't receive it. It was too big, so yeah. I had to make it wrong. And I was like, whoa. And now she loves it. And that's a huge part. Uh, that's a really interesting component of gifting um, and receiving that most of us never really explore uh, on a completely different example of that, what can somebody receive? I've um, recently, we're, we're in Houston right now, and, and there's a lot of, you know, a lot of stoplights. There's a lot of dudes out there panhandling with their different signs, you know, like, help me take care of my lots. family or, yes. you know, lots of different people essentially begging. And I think there's very different ways to beg. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm always in the question of, okay, so if I give this guy money, is yeah. it going to, is it going to change the world? Is it going to change the universe? Okay. That thing that you just said, the question, yeah. if I do this that right there. I just wanted to uh, exclamation mark that. Yeah, thank you. Because that's vital. And so I'm always in the question. And so that means like every, it's usually actually every fifth or sixth or seventh guy that ends up getting some money. And I'm like really generous with them. And they're, and, but I've, I always find it really interesting too, because the guys that I usually get a yes on are the ones who are actually offering a service. Yeah. They're not just saying, hey, support me. Yeah. They're, because there's a really big difference between what gets generated and created through gifting to those who receive and giving to those who are just takers. Yeah, you just stated a huge crux of the matter there, and it's an energetic difference. And most people, well, let's just say a lot of people in the world right now are feel like they're justified for taking or mm -hmm. they need to take in order to have. Yeah, and they just feel that they need, and which is a whole other symptom of a deeper yeah. issue, yeah. really. Way bigger. But that thing is when somebody's doing it from need, you cannot fulfill somebody else's need. You can never need. fulfill need. That is a black hole. It's quite literally a black hole energetically, meaning anything that goes in never comes out and nothing different gets created. It, and so it's when people function from need that they feel justified in taking. Need always leads to greed. So they feel justified in taking from you. You have more, you should give to me. And if you just look at the whole setup of that point of view energetically, that's a that's a place where they are saying this is not me like this is not my fault this happened to me i didn't choose anything that created this the world did this to me you need to make up for what the world has done to me because the world didn't do it to you like it did it to me which energetically is such a state of need that it can't be fulfilled and so when you see those people offering a service they're attempting to gift as a way of receiving and and like you said, totally different energy, but totally we're energetic energy. creatures. Now you came up something, you came up with something very interesting this holiday season that I'd love for <laughs> you to talk a little bit about. Yeah. Well, what happened was I was sitting there with Gary and we have a lot of wonderful friends who do their best to, to contribute to us during the holidays, you know, and buy us wonderful gifts that we would like. And basically we have everything. I mean, I don't have everything, but 
I have a lot. I'm very blessed. And I was looking at that and I'm like, you know, the gift of this season is our caring for each other, our caring, like our friends, the caring that they have for us. That's the gift. And, and what a need is there for that caring in the world? Truly, too. right? And so what I suggested to Gary, I'm like, hey, let's do this. Let's, I said, why don't we tell all of our friends, rather than giving us gifts, find somebody who your money will make a massive difference in their life. Take whatever money you were going to give on a gift or less or more, whatever, and find somebody who you contributing that will make their life greater. Now, can I just say what I love about this? Which is essentially what Dane is doing is he's saying, whatever the gift that you want to give to me, the thing, the, the caring you want to show me, will you turn it around and then plant that seed out in the world? Because I, what I love about that is you are then investing in the kind of world you want to live in, which is a world where people are more cared for and that there is more caring, period. You know, it's like, yeah. I, I, how many of you guys out there listening right now had this moment at one point in your life where somebody's kindness, unexpected kindness, mm. totally changed your mood and maybe even the direction of your life. Truly. So what would it take for there to be more of that, that, that the true gift that. in the world that starts with you guys listening and to know that whatever it is that you have to offer, whether, you know, wherever you are, whatever it is you have to offer, it can be a smile. So true. It can be the an, a warmth of invitation and inclusion. It can be a gold ring for your wife. It could be, you know, a house for your mom. Yeah. It could be so many things, but it doesn't have to be things. It can be your being. That, and and it is, and, and so I'm so glad you said that because everything is included. And so we'll have this conversation, people go, well, then it's bad to buy things for people. No, it's not. Oh, no. You should. No. no, no. That is definitely not it. Definitely not it at all. Because, But th when you're buying it, like be that energy. Be that energy of gifting to this person. And, and let's face it. We also all have a lot of people in our lives that refuse to receive. And we've tried to do the right thing and do whatever. Realize with their lack of receiving, what is the greatest gift you could give them that might have a chance of changing their level of receiving or not, but doing it with no point of view for those people. Okay, so great question. So we have that. And great if you question. ask that question, you maybe get a different sense. Like I'm going to give them a box of coal just to acknowledge they're which a is, bah humbug. Which is a completely different way of gifting. Yeah. Asking the question. That. Asking the question for what will change their life or contribute to them or also that look at what can actually be received and it may surprise you because mm. it, it may be a totally different thing than what your previous projection was presenting to you. But also, so if we, so we have those people, I just wanted to address that because some people are like, now I know how I'm going to change my dad mm. who's never loved me or anyone. Mm. I'm going to, no, don't make yourself wrong if it's not received, mm. which is so, but in asking that question, and you'll notice that like, it's so, like you said, it's like, it could be a smile. It could be a hug. It could be just the warmth of your being. It could be, you see somebody sitting alone at a party or something and you just walk up yep. to say hi, yep. exactly. you know, it's like, exactly. I mean, exactly that, oh my God, a little bit of genuine kindness. It just oh. makes all the difference. So true. So, and it's not about the money you spend. And it's not about the money you spend. And it's still not about the money you spend. <laughs> and it's not about the money you spend. Both ways, meaning it's not about the money you spend, meaning if you spend a little bit of money with this awareness, that is a huge gift. If, and if you can spend a lot of money on somebody and that will change their life and make their world greater, that's not wrong either. Just so it doesn't create a financial stress where you're trying to prove that you love by spending all your money. And even to recognize like something that I'm, I come from a pretty insignificant family. So there's not a lot of there at this point, since all of us are grown up and our parents are divorced and we're all sort of dispersed, there's not a lot of significance placed on the date. And so when I see something for somebody, I don't force it. Like if mm -hmm. I'm, if I want to gift something to somebody, I don't, I don't force it. But when I see that thing, that's mm -hmm. just that person that just screams that person, then I get that gift. And it might be, in, it might be in January, it might be in July, but it's 
also not, it's also giving myself the freedom to follow the energy that. and not make myself crazy based on Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> true. And it's like you said, you live in a family where that's acceptable. Yeah. You know, certain families would make you so wrong if you didn't give them a gift because it's all about keeping the image and proving that you care. Even, and the funny part is you have to prove that you care about them even though they don't care about you. Even though they don't look into your life and see what you require. So what can people do with that? Well, just acknowledge it and just realize people always, this one awareness can help a lot. People always accuse you of what they themselves are doing. Dane is giving you all a gift right now. True story. So if you recognize when they accuse you of being selfish, they accuse you of not caring, they're telling you where they function. Even if they don't say it out loud, yeah. they can be saying it in their heads. And yep. a lot, how many of you guys pick up on the points of view and the thoughts and the feelings yep. of the people around you yep. without even realizing it? Totally. And the other thing is, be willing to receive your family's judgment. Oh, big one. That is the greatest gift I ever gave myself. Yeah. And that, because then they can judge you and you're like, okay. Because when you're not willing to receive their judgment, you let their judgment make you feel bad, make you feel wrong, totally like you're controls, a terrible person. Totally controls you. And let's face it, somebody who's judgmental, they're just judgmental. judgmental. <laughs> You know, and no matter what you do, even if you turn you down or turn you up or whatever they are judging you for not being, if you do that, they'll judge you for being it too much. And just to clarify, judgment isn't a gift, guys. Yes, true story. <laughs> judgment is not a gift. That is not a gift. Unless you're willing to be an allowance of it, and then it's a gift for you. Interesting. Because you navigate your life differently if you were no longer the effect of judgment, if you were willing to receive it it changes your whole world Beautiful. because people judge all the time without even realizing it. They think it's yeah. caring. They yeah. think it's awareness. Yeah. I'm telling you what you're doing wrong. So you'll be a better person. Yeah. I'm telling you what you're doing wrong. So you won't fail continuously. You miserable failure. Thank you for your caring. Hmm. And what you do when they judge you like that, you say, thank you for your caring. It's a gift I got from Gary many years ago. When somebody judges you, you say, thank you for your caring because they know it's not caring you know it's not caring and now they have to try to prove that they're caring because you said thank you for your caring and so that is one of the things that you can do and one of the awarenesses we had that seemed to give people a lot of freedom at one point many years ago was that for every judgment you're willing to receive and receiving doesn't mean you're a bad person you know they say you're a bad person and you go oh my god i'm a bad person receiving means lower the walls and barriers they say you're a bad person. You just let it on in through your world. You don't have to put up a wall or anything. And in your head, you might go, interesting point of view. Mm -hmm. I have this point of view, interesting point of view. They have this point of view, an interesting point of view. I have this point of view that they have this point of view, which sets you free. But realize that for every judgment you're willing to receive, lower the walls and barriers and just let it go on through. Acknowledge that it's there and then don't hold on to it. For every judgment you're willing to receive, you make $5,000 more that year. <laughs> For every judgment you reject, you lose 10000 Why? Because in order to try to reject judgment, you have to put up walls to energy, which is not really even possible anyway. But those walls that you put up, they don't know keep out judgment and keep out mean people and that sort of stuff. They just keep everything out. They keep everything out, including money, including happiness, including space, including joy, including your very being. Because how do you put an infinite being in a prison cell and expect them to still be infinite? But this is a prison cell of our own making because we're not willing to receive judgment. And part of the reason we're not willing to receive it is because we don't want the power it would give us if we did. Because if we were truly willing to receive every judgment in the world, we would have ultimate power because nobody would be able to control us with their judgments. Bingo. And we wouldn't be able to control us with our judgments anymore. Well... There's a gift for Christmas. There was the biggest <laughs> gift, tidally wrapped. Feel free to re-listen to that 15 times, guys, because that was a great roadmap to freedom. Awesome. Thank you, Dane. Thank you, everybody out here who's listening, out there who's... Ev Thank you, everyone who's in here listening. Everybody, and everyone, get out of my room. And everybody out there who's listening, grateful that you have found this podcast and grateful that you are drawn to a different possibility have a Merry Christmas. Yes, have a very Merry Christmas. And I would like to say thank you, all of you, for being drawn to that different possibility that Shannon talks about. Because with enough of us actually seeking 
exploring and willing to receive different possibilities, we together create a different possibility for the world. We love you. Have an amazing New Year's. See you in 2021. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Thank you for listening to this show. My target is to make consciousness easy to find and choose. So if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a five-star review on iTunes and share this with somebody who you know who might be looking for more consciousness in their life. You can visit me on shannon-ohara.com or talktotheentities.com. And to learn more about the amazing tools of Access Consciousness, you can visit accessconsciousness.com and be sure to subscribe to the podcast.